Dr. Fauci, do you still support funding of the NIH funding of the lab in Wuhan? The NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain of function research in the Wuhan Institute. We have not funded gain of function research on this. I will repeat again, the NIH and NIAID categorically has not funded gain of function research. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say, we, I, I don't know how many times I can say it. Well, maybe one more. How many times can he say it? Dr. Fauci being very careful with his words with Senator Rand Paul today. Fauci says the NIH and the NIAID never directly funded gain-of-function research at the Institute, the Wuhan Institute of Virology. But, like we said, before that's, before that's true, but it's also misleading. You see, the NIH, headed by Dr. Fauci, sent $3.7 million to a nonprofit called Echo Health Alliance, which then turned around and sent 600000 from that grant to the Wuhan lab. I hope you're following that. Take your time, play this back. Dr. Fauci's favorite sparring partner joins us now, Senator Rand Paul. Senator Rand Paul, you felt and you feel as though, using some of the things I just said, that Dr. Fauci was being deceptive today. In what way? Well, I think it's incredibly important that the audience know what gain of function is. They take an animal virus that's benign and does not infect humans, and they juice it up, they make it a super virus so it can infect humans. Now, ostensibly, this is done to study the virus, but there's a danger if that virus leaks that it could kill a lot of people. So when I asked him about this research, we knew the answer. The answer is this, that there's a famous scientist in the Wuhan lab, her name is Dr. Xi, and she published a paper paper a couple years ago, which has been reviewed by MIT and says that it's a gain of function research. But in the byline, she has to list the sponsors. She lists Dr. Fauci and the NIAID as a sponsor of her research, which everybody acknowledges gain of function research, juicing up these super viruses. So I don't know how he can get around this. He could argue, oh, it was an intermediary group. We gave it to EcoHealth who gave her the money. I think, I can't imagine he's on national television television saying that he didn't do this when the peer-reviewed journal has a byline that says the author, this Batwoman, this scientist from the Wuhan Institute, that she acknowledges that the money came from Dr. Fauci and his institute. So this is a dangerous act. Okay, let's say it's science. I want to stop the next one, so I got to see what happens when we activate these viruses. But other people say it's too dangerous. If this gets out, it's going to be devastating. Somehow, it could have gotten out. Uh, is that what you're saying, Senator? I don't think we know for sure, but yes, it could have gotten out. And there are a lot of people arguing that there are several different unusual aspects to the virus that make it look like it came from a lab and not from nature. They haven't found an intermediate host. They haven't found anything between the bat and the human. Both SARS and MERS went to an intermediate host, like a ferret or a civet. But the other thing that's peculiar about this is that when we look at this and we say, you know, did it come directly? The way they're studying this in the lab, they studied the SARS virus. This is the one like COVID that came around in 2004, but had a 15% mortality. So they juiced up this already deadly virus and made it more infective into humans in the lab. They've admitted that they did that, but can you imagine 15% mortality? COVID-19 has a 1% mortality. That means instead of 3 million people dying worldwide, if the, one of the viruses that, that she worked on with NIH money got out, 45 million people could have died. There are 11 labs like this in the U.S. that are studying animal viruses that they're transforming into deadly human viruses. 11 labs like this in the United States. So it is important for people to understand is that Forgetting about Dr. Fauci and his future, or your political future, this is about understanding how this started to stop the next virus. If we don't understand how this started, we're gonna get slammed again and we're gonna be ill-equipped once again. I don't understand the lack of curiosity from Dr. Fauci. This is his business. Why is that not his obsession rather than being on 25 talk shows a day? 
<laughs> if you want to be even more confounded by this, they wanted to investigate what happened over there. The person they investigated is the head of EcoHealth. So they, they, they hired the person to investigate whether there was a problem at the lab. They hired the guy that gave them the money. So if something came out that said this virus came from the lab, do you think the person that gave them the money might have culpability? Absolutely. So they hired, they hired the guy to do the investigation who has a conflict of interest here. So you start to wonder, all of these wagons are circling. The Chinese communists aren't talking. We gave them the money. I mean, there's a lot of potential problems here. But once again, I'm not saying it did come from the lab. I don't know. But there's a lot of evidence that makes me worried about this lab and the fact that people are not being honest, the fact that Dr. Fauci would lie and say that he didn't give any money to this lab. Now, maybe his answer is like you said, he gave it to an intermediary who gave it to them. But if that's his answer, I would think that's a kind of a curious way of saying it didn't happen when it really did happen. Happened. And I got to leave it here. Four months into the coronavirus emergency, the deputy director of the NIH wrote an email to Echo Health. And they said, quote, you are instructed to cease providing any funds to the Wuhan Institute. Peter Danzig is the chief scientist there. He quickly got 77 Nobel Prize winners to sign a statement saying not to deprive them of their money. What's the desperation to get Western money into an area where we know the virus came from some way, somehow? But here's the other interesting thing. If Fauci's deputy is writing a note saying that they're going to stop the money, that implies that there was money flowing to the Wuhan Institute. He says no money was flowing to the Wuhan Institute. Well, then why was it stopped? I mean, none of this makes sense. None of it makes sense at all. And I just wonder... Uh, when a Democrat, and I hear Senator Menendez and others begin to mobilize to understand that this is national security, and we got to find Absolutely. out. It'll be the biggest liability case in the history of man, and China would be at the forefront and maybe some others. Uh, Senator Rand Paul, thanks for asking the tough questions, especially over the last year, and especially today, as it has to do with the science. I know you got 20 million things to do. Uh, I appreciate you. you joining us tonight. Thanks. I wanna Beijing acknowledges now that they don't think it originated in that market. Well, it may not have originated in the market, um, but it certainly could have. I think you could say we don't know how and where it originated. He can't quit the wet market theory. So why should we trust them now? Here not a react man in the middle of it. Senator from Kentucky, Rand Paul. Senator, thank you so much for joining Fox News Primetime. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we have the introduction of Omicron. You have the way in which the South African doctor has characterized it, which is thankfully unusually mild. Yet when you watch the media, elected officials, they're on hyperdrive on the fear index. Your response to where we are right now with this now third iteration. You know, I think the hysteria gets the better of the media, and we need to calm down, take a breath, and see what this is. Now, if it turned out to be worse, then we're going to have to, you know, make some decisions. But it looks like, and this is what happens a lot of times with viruses, as they mutate, they become more transmissible, more easily contagious, but mm -hmm. a lot of times they become less deadly. And that's what the reports are, at least the initial reports from South Africa are, more transmissible, but fortunately less deadly. Senator, do you agree or disagree with the decision to uh, institute a travel ban uh, in South Africa and surrounding countries? Remember, Joe Biden characterized it as utterly racist mm -hmm. against black and brown people for Donald Trump to do so. Now they're doing it, but it, it could wait until Monday. It's incredibly, incredibly hypocritical for him to have criticized Trump and now do the same thing. But if you ask me just about bans, bans in general don't work. Almost nothing that man does works to slow down the spread of a virus. The vaccine works and natural immunity. Everything else we've done could have possibly delayed it a little bit, but really probably has done little, if, if nothing, to changing the trajectory of things. Every time we've instituted a, a mandate, whether it be masks or social distancing or how many people can be at a restaurant or how late you can get a drink at a bar, none of this affected the trajectory of the virus. The virus has moved, the numbers of, of viral infections per day have moved uh, regardless of what man has tried to do. Other than the vaccine, and the vaccine was working pretty well in May of April, but now the vaccine isn't working so well and the virus has escaped it. So the one thing they could do, they're not doing, and that is we should allow for a new vaccine to be introduced. They have it waiting, but they're not doing anything to introduce the new vaccine. Why would they not introduce a new vaccine? 
You know, that's a good question. I, I think, well, maybe they bought a lot of the old one. They haven't used it up yet, and maybe they're trying to be frugal. Maybe has somebody has something invested in the old one, but the old one isn't working so well. It probably does reduce your risk of uh, severe hospitalization still and death, but it's not really fighting off the virus at a level where we really could change the trajectory. In April and May of this year, we got down to less than 10,000 cases a day. We did that when the first vaccine was very, very effective. When we got the Delta variant, now that it dominates, the vaccine isn't as, as effective as it mm. was. And we have a new vaccine, it's sitting there. We approve a new vaccine for the flu. They criticize Trump endlessly for, you know, why does he do uh, the vaccine? We got a vaccine within one year, and why aren't they doing anything to introduce a new vaccine or to allow, get the red tape out of the way. Let's get the new vaccine out and see if that helps everyone. It's, good. it's a good point. The guy who made a living getting rid of red tape got rid of it. He gets no credit for it. Now they can't seem to do anything similar now that we're in the middle of it. You alluded to it, uh, Senator, the fact that things that we did in 2019 don't match the reality of where we are in 2021. Well, one man's been there the entire time. You know him well, Dr. Anthony Fauci. He had an interview on Sunday where he declared that he represents science. Take a listen. Anybody who's looking at this carefully realizes that there's a distinct anti-science flavor to this. So if they get up and criticize science, nobody's gonna know what they're talking about. But if they get up and really aim their bullets at Tony Fauci, well, people could recognize there's a person there, so it's easy to criticize. But they're really criticizing science because I represent science. I never broke the law. I am the law. Because I represent science. I never broke the law. I am the law. Because I represent science. I never broke the law. I am the law. He represents science. I have a feeling he might be talking about you, Senator. <laughs> You know, when a government bureaucrat has the audacity, the arrogance to say they represent all of science, we should be running the other way. We should be running the other way. We should be running the other way. It conjures up images of the medieval church, you know, in their repression of science. Science has nothing to do with having obedience to any kind of government dogma. Science has nothing to do with having obedience to any kind of government dogma. Science has nothing to do with having obedience to any kind of government dogma. And you have to realize that most of what Fauci talks about isn't science, isn't science, isn't science. He's not talking about a study on this or a study of that. He's talking about wear a mask. Well, when you talk about the peer-reviewed studies of masks, there was one done in Denmark, showed that it didn't work. When you look at all of Sweden, 1.8 million children have not been wearing masks for the last two years. They've had zero COVID deaths. And you say, well, have the teachers been infected? Well, it turns out the teachers are infected at the same rate as the rest of the public. Mm. So they've, they, they've had no masks for a year, year and a half, and it has worked, and that's a whole country. And there's no real discussion of this because if you question him, and really that's public policy, that's not science, it's public policy backed by some science, but if you question him, oh, somehow you are questioning science because he represents <laughs> all science, that is incredibly arrogant. It really is, it conjures up uh, Sylvester Stallone, I am the law. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, at one point it becomes Completely absurd and, as you pointed out, very, very arrogant. Senator Rand Paul, thank you so much for breaking down actual science for us. As you know, scientists have a duty to not let politics affect the research, but one Northwestern University professor saying in a Wall Street Journal op-ed that it's happening, he writes this, scientists corrode public trust when they pretend to have authority on social and political matters. We thought our next guest, the author of the new book, The Dying Citizen, would be perfect for this topic. Victor Davis Hanson joins us now, senior fellow at Hoover Institution. Nice to see you, Victor. Morning to you. Uh, science is to be respected and explored. We all know that. It's also to be questioned to make sure that the science is correct. How do you see the position of this professor here? Well, I think he's absolutely right. What we've done, Bill, is we've entrusted these unelected people, bureaucrats, with judicial, legislative, and executive power. So Dr. Fauci practices what Plato called the noble lie. So wear no mask, wear one mask, wear two masks. And when he's caught, he said, I did it for your own good so you wouldn't buy all the masks up and doctors wouldn't have them. Herd immunity, 60, 70, 80 percent. I kept changing the figure because the science was necessary to adapt to show you that you still had to get vaccinated. And the worst, of course, is, as people pointed out, is natural immunity was as comparable or superior to acquired, but he didn't want to tell you that because he was afraid that the citizen might say, 
I'll take my chances and get COVID. It's, if I'm under 60, it's 99 plus. And I don't think they should do that. But he was afraid of that. And then they would get COVID and not have to take the vaccination and get superior immunity. But mm. how absurd is Dr. Fauci? Because if you get vaccinated, he's saying, uh, if you have COVID, you still have to get vaccinated. So the people in COVID are saying, well, if COVID uh, acquired immunity is superior, do I have to, uh, do the people who are vaccinated have to go out and get COVID so they have double protection? Like, you want me to have double protection? So they, and then, you know, this is common, Bill. We had those 1,200 healthcare professionals in May of last year swear that the mental health concerns of the BLM protesters were more important than violating quarantine, violating social distancing, violating mask wearing. And, you know, it's really, I'm really disgusted with this. I think everybody is. They don't like these noble lies, if that's what the, the mm -hmm. term is. James Clapper, when he lied, if you remember, under oath and said, the National Security Agency doesn't surveil people. And then when caught, he said, well, I only gave the least untruthful answer. Or those 50 retired CIA experts, scientists, whatever we use, said Hunter Biden's laptop is probably Russian disinformation. And they did that because they thought it was noble not to see uh, Joe Biden lose well, the election. I, I so would just argue these Victor, people that are very dangerous. Yeah, if the science takes you in a different direction, you have to change your position, your feeling on that. In, in this piece that I mentioned by Gary Saul Morrison, he writes that last yeah. year in Montana's Glacier National Park, they had to remove signs that said the glaciers would be gone by the year 2020. I, I, that, that's an irony there uh, into itself. Now, the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, had a breakthrough case with COVID. And just this week, he signed an executive order that would ban the max, uh, vaccine mandate. Now, assume that his position is based on science. How do you feel about a governor of a very large state like that taking that position? Well, I think what he's saying is that I have informed citizens and I serve at their bequest and they're rational people and they're going to make a decision that a, if they're under 60 and it's very unlikely they're going to die from COVID and uh, they may prefer to take their chances rather than to get a vaccination. I didn't do that. I don't recommend it. But I'm not going to tell somebody that acquired immunity is not as good as a vaccination when the science says otherwise because I'm nobly going to lie to them and hope they'll get otherwise vaccinated. And that's what he's trying to tell people, that I'm going to give you the facts and let you make the decision because I trust your judgment more than I do Anthony Fauci's. Remember, Anthony Fauci is a person who routed $600,000 through Echo Health and some insane idea to promote what was really gain-of-function research at the viro virology lab in Wuhan, which was ground zero of the pandemic, and he still denies that it's gain-of-function research. A citizen wouldn't do that. <laughs> Nobody would elect a representative to do that. Only somebody who's unaccountable to the people has that latitude and power, and yet we're not supposed to get upset about it. And he, mm. he, to this day, he won't tell us why he routed that $600,000 or whether it is or not yeah, okay. gain of function. And the, sci the science suggests that he's incorrect. Fair point. Uh, Mike Gallagher, Congressman, is coming up in about 45 minutes on that very topic about uh, Wuhan and what the access is or is not. Fauci once said, uh, if you're seeing attacks on me, quite frankly, those attacks are on science. Hmm. Um, his quote, Victor Davis Hanson, yeah. thank I mean, you for... We have, a lot of, we have a lot of cult figures and religious figures throughout history that said, if you doubt, if you dare doubt my word, then you're an apostate or you're irreligious. So he's treating science as a personality cult and a religion that's wrapped up in his own persona. Mm -hmm. And that's about as anti-scientific mm -hmm. as you can be. He should be saying, look at the data, use a scientific method, and then see if I'm on the right or wrong side of science and make your own decisions based on logic. Not trust me, I'm a cult figure. <laughs> Fair points. VDH, thank you. Victor Davis Hanson. Nice to see you, sir. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming in. Now, tonight for mass mandates, Joe Biden's disjointed COVID-19 policy has been an utter train wreck. One reason for the Adam Schiff show, as I call it, Joe Biden does whatever Dr. Anthony Fauci tells him to do. Sadly, Fauci, we now know, is dishonest, corrupt, self-interested, a government doctor, God complex, cares more about his own personal fame and celebrity status, and democratic circles than he does in protecting the country. In order to get airtime on TV, he frequently just makes things up. He guesses. He jumps to conclusions. He has been wrong on almost every single major issue in this pandemic 
from day one. He flat out lied about the origins of COVID-19. We have the evidence and proof. His involvement in gain of function research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology is now well chronicled. But according to the great Dr. Fauci, he can do no wrong because he is the very embodiment of truth and science. Take a look. Anybody who's looking at this carefully realizes that there's a distinct anti-science flavor to this. So if they get up and criticize science, nobody's going to know what they're talking about. But if they get up and really aim their bullets at Tony Fauci, well, people could recognize there's a person there. So it's easy to criticize. But they're really criticizing science because I represent science. That's dangerous. Oh, okay, Mr. Science. Texas Senator Ted Cruz rightly, along with Rand Paul, calling on Fauci to be investigated over his ties to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Senator Cruz joins us now with more. Senator, you laid out the perfect uh, proof positive that he's lying. He knew about gain of function. He knew that the NIH contributed money to it, and he lied. Tell us, tell us the chronology. Well, I got to say, Doc. You know, Dr. Fauci, I think, is the most dangerous bureaucrat in the history of the country. Uh, you, you know, he talked a moment ago, uh, you, you just played, about hurting science. I don't think anyone has hurt science, has hurt the credibility of the CDC, has hurt the credibility of doctors more than Dr. Fauci, because throughout this pandemic, He's been dishonest, he's been political, he's been partisan, and, and the American people know it. The, 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 why is it that the Biden administration decreed that, that, that masks have to be worn in schools by kids? Well, because teachers union bosses wanted it. And that's not a scientific reason, that is a data reason. And, and you know, this weekend he did this long interview where he gave the answer. He said, I represent science. I am science. I got to admit, Sean, I was laughing. It's, it's like Louis XIV, uh, the, 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 the sun king in, in, in France, saying, l'estat c'est moi, I am the state. It, it, it is this delusion of grandeur that you cannot criticize him. And, and, and it was very striking. Uh, you know, in the course of that interview, he was asked about, I asked the Attorney General Merrick Garland if he's going to investigate and, and prosecute Dr. Fauci for lying to Congress. And, and Margaret Brennan asked him about that. And what did Fauci do? He didn't discuss any of the substance. Instead, he just attacked and engaged in ad hominem attacks. He basically did the Beavis and Butthead defense. He just screamed liars at everything. But, you know, facts are stubborn things, Sean. And so here are the simple facts that Fauci needs to explain and that the Department of Justice should investigate. So on May 11th, Fauci testified before a Senate committee that, quote, the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain of function research in the Wuhan Institute of Virology. That's a clear categorical statement. But then on October 20th, the NIH wrote that they funded an experiment at the Wuhan lab testing, quote, if spike proteins from naturally occurring uh, bat coronaviruses circulating in China were capable of binding to the human ACE2 receptor in a mouse model. That is gain of function research. That is taking an existing virus and modifying it to make it more dangerous to humans. And, and listen, at the end of the day, 18 U.S.C. section 1001 makes it a felony punishable by up to five years in prison for lying to Congress. The statements from Dr. Fauci and the NIH are directly contradictory. And I got to say, I think Margaret Brennan is, is a talented journalist, but she dropped the ball in not following up, letting him just respond with insults instead of asking him the simple question. You stated that we don't fund gain of function research. The NIH stated we do fund gain of function research. They can't both be true. And if you lied to Congress, it's a felony. She didn't press him on that. And the reason this matters is, is there is a lot of circumstantial evidence to su suggest that the U.S. government participated in funding research modifying coronaviruses that could well have led to COVID-19. And if that's true, that is stunning and indefensible. We know the Chinese government has enormous culpability, but there's a real possibility the American government under Dr. Oh. Fauci does as well. And that's what he doesn't want to address. I, I, I think you're right. As his testimony, I think it was May 11th, and the, the letter from the NIH on, on October 20th are directly contradictory. <laughs>